game is to be where you are, be it honestly and as consciously as you know how. Watch the latest Ram Dass documentary film, Becoming Nobody, on Gaia.com. Of course, there was fear in losing that familiar identity. But there was always also wonder. The Gaia.com library supports you with transformational content. See it for yourself and go to Gaia.com slash Be Here Now and check out the Be Here Now playlist curated just for you. Visit Gaia.com slash Be Here Now and start your free trial today. Hi folks, it's Raghu and it's Ramdas here and now. I got a very unique podcast today. I've got a couple of different excerpts uh, that when I listened to them uh, earlier today, they both hit me uh, right in the sweet spot. So I hope they do with you as well. And I'll, uh, I'll give you a little brief uh, idea of what they are in a second. I, I want to uh, alert everybody. This is an alert that there are still spots open. I haven't done this before around our Maui retreat in the spring, May 3rd through 8th. Krishna Das, Ram Das, of course. Lama Tsultramalioni, who has not been to one of the, uh, the big retreats we hold a couple of times a year. And she does incredible work for everybody out there that you can take advantage of that's around dealing with disturbing emotions, dark emotions, inviting them in. It's called chode practice, and it's, uh, in English, the best way you can translate it is feeding the demons, meaning the darkness inside us. And it's a fabulous practice. She's going to be out there teaching. So is Sharon Salzberg, and uh, so is... Rameshwar Das doing these wonderful, he, he uh, is a co-author with Ram Das in the last Polishing the Mirror, Beloved Now, and he does with these wonderful meditations in the morning and and uh, also hangs out with Ram Das doing uh, Dharma sessions. And uh, it's a it's a it's just a wonderful day. My wife Saraswati will be there teaching yoga, Benji Wertheimer uh, and Shantala will be doing the music for yoga, and Benji I'm sure will be sitting in with Krishna Das doing the nightly kirtans. Uh, and we got our fun stuff with uh, that I do with Duncan Trussell, our podcast guru. He'll be out there as well. And uh, Tigang, uh, what else is it like? Nina does the Chalices. It's a rich, rich event. So there are still spots left be, uh, because we've only had it up for about, oh, four or five weeks, I guess, since the beginning of January. And uh, just go to ramdas.org, go to the retreat uh, events in the menu there, and you'll be linked over to the registration page, which gives you all of the information about where we are going to be, of course, on this beautiful beach, Cove, right on the beach, in the Napili Kai. And... Uh, some of us that are having like uh, not so good weather right now can relate with the beautiful warm breezes of Maui, thinking of being on that beach and hanging out with the dolphins and uh, going and chanting a little, meditating a little. Uh, so I just want to um, I want to give that prompt. And uh, if you're going to take advantage, you probably should do it sooner than later because this thing does sell. These do sell out. Um, because it's such a, a great thing. It's been going on for, God, a long time now. How many years? Eight years, something like that. Almost all the whole time Ram Dass has been in, in Maui, which is more than eight years. But uh, So here we go. This I just want to give you a little um, idea of what it is, these two uh, beautiful uh, talks are. I mean, they are really great. Uh, the first one I'm going to play is... Um, it's called Everywhere You Look. It's not called this, but this is the theme of it. Everywhere you look, you see what you're looking for. When you're looking for God, all you see is God. And then Ram Dass gets into this uh, constant all the way through the talk. It's got a very meditative quality. Both of these things do, although there isn't a real meditative. Well, real? 
there is a meditation on the end of the uh, part of the second uh, uh, talk that's part of this podcast. But in this one, everywhere you look, you see what you're looking for. So people tell me it's basically hard to be in a human body. It's hard. I have the job I have. I don't like it. You know, it's very difficult. My relationship, you know, that's really not so good either. I've got dietary problems. I'm, I got to lose weight. Everywhere you look, you see what you're looking for. It's very far out when you think about it. How we act during the day is just reflex off of our uh, wanting to make sure we have no pain, wanting to make sure we get what we want, to be more comfortable, uh, to be more secure. Everywhere you look, you see what you're looking for. So, uh, of course, the idea is at the point at which you you can, you start to see the divine is what you're looking for and you start to see more of that or and you see the reality inside yourself uh, more around the truth of how you how we get lost day to day so there's one great little story here i mean so this will give you the idea of what the whole thing is in its essence and i never heard this story but it's a story about maharaji who went out with a devotee and they were visiting his son in in a college and, and, you know, they were in a dorm room, whatever, so Maharaji went in the room, and the, apparently the kid had put up a picture of a nude woman, and he got really embarrassed, and he he just ran over there, and he turned it against the wall. Oh, my God. And Maharaji said, don't do that. It's the Divine Mother. Wherever you look, all you see is God. <laughs> It's quite, it's just a little flip. It's amazing. Actually, you can go through your day and you just see how, you know, your motivations and you're doing one thing or another and you're projecting from a place of it's all attachment or, or preventing suffering or wanting something and whatever, all of this dance that we do. And if you suddenly saw it from the point of view of, Ramdas is very much like that now, that Everything, you know, he tells all these stories. Even the, he, everything he sees is love. Even the dirty rug. And there's, he tells that famous story where somebody said, you like that dirty, I love that rug. You love that rug. And what about me? Yeah, you know, you're supposed to love me like you love the rug. That doesn't make, you know. <laughs> and he sent him a piece of the rug and Ramdas has it framed up in his wall. It's everywhere you, everywhere you uh, look. Everywhere you look, you see what you're looking for. So it's a beautiful talk. It really is. And it's highly instructional. Um, the, and then the... Uh, so the second part of this... Uh, the second part of the podcast is um, our wonderful curator, uh, Nathan Wilburn, has come up with another closer big time this is it, it's it's not long but it's never the length it's the quality it's it's from a retreat a closing of a retreat that he was talking to the retreatants and essentially it's around for the true revo- the true revolution is the evolution of consciousness it's not us against them it's us filling them until all the them is us. There's a high bar, right? Especially considering what's going on these days. But um, this talk is great because he really uh, comes into some things, some key things, particularly around being truthful with yourself. So, you know, these people have been in a retreat and they're feeling great. Um, and then they go home and then, gee, the meditation isn't quite as one pointed as it used to be at the retreat or I'm singing, but it's like, I don't feel anything. And, and so this is a great, great, uh, piece of advice. Be very truthful with yourself. Is something stale? Recognize it's stale. Don't believe it's not. And just sit with it. Right. Then forcing yourself to be in a meditative posture, you can relax and just sit with the fact that something doesn't feel right in that moment or the same thing 
with, uh, with chanting or anything that you do that's bringing you into a focused, aware, present, here and now place. I think that that, uh, I, I, uh, I appreciate that. Uh, uh, Ram Dass' uh, thing of being really truthful with himself and the way that he was so honest from the first talks that he gave when he first came back from India, th- that's really uh, a primary factor where I completely uh, gravitated t- towards what it was he was representing. Um what else is I just want to mention a couple of other things um, oh here your entire life is the process of course that's a great thing and he talks about you know gris for, uh, life is grist for the mill listen to your inner voice impure though it may be trust and and he talks about uh, and to me so tr- telling the truth to yourself or being truthful with yourself about is everything that you can be that you're given enough light to shine in the dark places and trusting that intuitive place it may not be right but it is eventually going to be right and then you he talks about what do you he said put ask like you're with me in this retreat and you know and you have a thought about something and don't really know which way to turn what would you say about that ramdas say to yourself and stop and listen and if you ask in purity and listen to your heart you will receive an answer and and this goes for anybody who is your uh, most trusted deepest connection to the divine or you can sit and ask for uh feedback and you will get it and it's a matter of trusting it and it doesn't have to be perfect every time it doesn't have to be okay that didn't work out so that was bullshit it's okay that's it's okay and there's a great meditation on this that i'm really happy uh uh, it's just absolutely gorgeous beautiful so here you go so everywhere you look you see what you're looking for. And when you're looking for God, all you see is God. That's the first talk. And then the second one is is really around the true revolution is the evolution of consciousness and us aligning ourselves in that way. Well, Ram Dass here and now for this week. Again, take a look at that retreat. Uh, We'd love to see you out there. And uh, whatever else you can do to support Ram Dass Here and Now, the Be Here Now Network, we appreciate it. Just go to the homepage. You'll see a couple of links to donation and Amazon. Um, And again, and give us your feedback. I have a couple of people sending in ideas about what they want to hear. I'm happy to hear those. And I will look for them, be it on a subject or a specific talk you've heard of Ram Dass, as long as we haven't played it before. Thank you for being here with us. Ram Ram. Everywhere you look, you see what you're looking for. Everywhere you look, you see what you're looking for. When you're looking for God, everywhere you look, you see God. Everywhere you look, you see what you're looking for. People tell me I can't live in the city. People tell me I can't live with my partner. People tell me I can't live in this world of anger and corruption.
everywhere you look, you see what you're looking for. When you're looking for God, all you see is God. People tell me they don't like their job. People tell me the weather is too humid. People tell me it's hard being in a human body. People tell me that where they live they don't have satsang. Wherever you look, you see what you're looking for. When you're looking for God, all you see is God. Maharaji once went to visit a young fellow who was at a college dormitory. And the fellow had a pinup picture on his, wall, on his wall of a nude girl. And when he suddenly realized Maharaji was in the room, he freaked. And he quickly got up and he turned the picture to the wall. And Maharaji said, don't do that. That's the Divine Mother. Wherever you look, you see what you're looking for. If you're looking for God, all you see is God. How do you stay with God? By stopping reading newspapers? Turning off the news? By isolating yourself? Is God at the top of a mountain? By a river? Isn't it all just the, the dance? The dance. The dance of Kali, the dance of Shiva. The dance of life energy. The play, the lila, the play, the dance. Can you dance? People tell me they don't like doing the laundry. People tell me they have a hard time with their diets. People tell me they can't stand the traffic. People tell me they're frightened by the way the world is going. Wherever you look, you see what you're looking for. I came to Maharaji once and I said, Maharaji, you can't send me back to America. I'm too impure. And I was crying. And he came up very close and he looked at me. And he looked at my forehead, my eyes. He looked in my nose. He looked in my beard. He had me turn around. He studied me very carefully. And then he said to me, I don't see any impurity. Wherever you look, you see what you're looking for. If you're looking for God, 
All you see is God. People tell me they don't like to balance their checkbooks. People tell me they don't like physical pain. People tell me they don't like to have their teeth fixed. People tell me they can't stand taking care of a baby. People tell me that everywhere they look, they see violence. You know what? Wherever you look, you see what you're looking for. When you're looking for God, all you see is God. What could it possibly mean to transform the world? Aldous Huxley once said to me that it was, he loved jewels because he said it reminded him of pebbles on astral planes. Do you think we're gonna transform the world by lifting all the pebbles off the walks and putting precious jewels down? But haven't you been in a state where everywhere you look, it's all precious? I was once doing a book with Sidney Cohen about LSD. He was with the Food and Drug Administration. He was the good guy and I was the bad guy. And there was a fellow named Larry Schiller who was a photographer who had all these pictures and we would pick pictures and then write material. Pictures were all about acid trips. Sydney picked all pictures of people huddled in doorways and screaming and being comforted by others and looking horrified. And I picked pictures of people playing flutes in fields of flowers <laughs> and dancing with garlands in their hair. And there was only one picture of the hundreds of pictures that Larry offered us that we both picked. And it was a picture of a fellow lying on the kitchen floor looking at a puddle made by a spilled bottle of Coca-Cola. <laughs> Sydney picked it because it showed how trivial the mind gets under drugs. I picked it because I've looked at so many spilled puddles of Coca-Cola. <laughs> and I know that wherever you look, you see what you're looking for. And when you're looking for God, all you see is God. The transformation must begin in the human heart. The transformation doesn't begin with an institution. We don't organize to transform the universe. We don't get a God squad together to do it. We start with the individual human heart. We start right here inside our self. And when your apparatus of perceiving and apperceiving 
and sensing is transformed, then everywhere you walk, there is only God. And everybody you meet has the opportunity to see God through your eyes, through your being. And everybody that you meet has an opportunity to see God in themselves when they look into your eyes because you are a mirror, because that's what you are looking at in them. And when people come to you and they are angry, do you see the anger? Wherever you look, you see what you're looking for. When you're in your ego, you see the anger. When you're looking for God, you know what you see? All you see is God. Right in the human heart, the whole process starts. The great transformation that is underway, that is labeled by so many labels, it's labeled as narcissism, as self-preoccupation as the generation of me-ism, as decadence. But maybe it's a reawakening and a re-understanding, a new understanding, that the basic institution is the human heart, the individual human heart. No bureaucracy will transform earth into heaven. But a human heart, the heart of Christ, your heart, can do it. It takes only one heart to start the whole chain. Meher Baba wrote, said, wrote, he was silent, he wrote on his, his board, love has to spring spontaneously from within. It is in no way amenable to any form of inner or outer force. Love and coercion can never go together. Love can never be forced on anyone. It can be awakened in a person through love itself. Love is essentially self-communicative those who do not have it catch it from those who have. True love is unconquerable and irresistible and it goes on gathering power and spreading itself until eventually it transforms everyone whom it touches. And as I go around the country and find in... Now I expect when I lecture in 
Vancouver or Seattle or San Francisco to find thousands of beings like us. But Lincoln, Nebraska, Lawrence, Kansas, Oklahoma City, Dallas, uh, on and on and on. And everywhere I go, here we are again. And what's beautiful is we are not a spiritual community in the sense of groupiness. We don't have to join anything. We don't have to have membership in anything. There's no club. It's not power on the physical plane. We don't have to get confused. When you get into organization, you get into worldly power. Look how many of us there are. What's beautiful is it's very much like a Martian takeover of a culture. It's like everybody stays just who they were, but they're all different. And more and more, the lectures are full of lawyers, doctors, bus drivers, firemen, everybody, all of us, just human beings living their lives. But there's a quality, an inner change. For the true revolution is the evolution of consciousness. It's not us against them. It's us filling them until all of them is us. No proselytizing. You don't lay a trip on anybody. You just become a light. You go back to your community and you become a light. You don't have to point to your life. You just have to be your life. And every time you meditate, you brighten your life. And every time you remember God, you brighten your life. And that's what you're doing for your fellow human beings. And everything you touch is lightened, is enlightened by you. Such a nice game. Such a nice game. This may lead you to seek more gatherings, retreats, lectures, tapes, books, etc. But remember, what you're seeking is within yourself. And that you have made this connection. prepares you to recognize that your entire life is a process. Wherever you are, you may never get to another one of these. And you may go just as high to enlightenment as somebody who spent all their life going to these things. Listen to your inner voice, impure though it may be, trust it. When you would ask what would Ram Dass say about this? Ask yourself, what do you say about this, Ram Dass? And then stop and listen. And if you ask in purity and listen in your heart, you will receive an answer. And you will learn to trust that answer. And that answer, if five minutes later you ask the question, there may be a different answer, because that's five minutes later. Learn to trust your inner voice. And there's nothing wrong with making mistakes on the spiritual path. Joining the wrong thing, following the wrong being, getting caught in the wrong model, getting too for Brenta or fanatic about the wrong thing. Let it all happen. It's okay. If you fall on your face, just get up, brush yourself off, and get on with it. You're not going to be eternally damned. There is no such thing. Eternal damnation is just another trip. I'm eternally damned. That's it. That's what it's like. That's how long it lasts. And the other thing is be very truthful with yourself. When something is stale, acknowledge that it's stale. Don't make believe it isn't stale. When there is singing, if you don't feel like singing, try it. See if your heart opens. If not, don't sing. Just be there. If the meditation gets dry, stop it for a while until it feels good to work at it again. Or stay with the dryness and keep working with it. But don't be dry and make believe it isn't. Don't make believe it's happening when you don't feel it is. Be totally straight with yourself. With what you all now know, I guarantee the process cannot stop for you in this lifetime. And the experience that it is stopped, which many of you will have, is just another experience. Treat it that way. Don't get lost in it. You don't have to. Okay?
God fills you. God knows you. God loves you. God is you. Slowly through this lifetime, deeper, closer, more open. Coming into the flow of the universe. You are the beloved of God. You are the one. Let go of all the impediments so that you may shine in your true light. You are like a lotus flower opening, opening. Opening to the light of God. I feed your love. I feed your faith. I feed your wisdom. I feed your compassion. I feed your soul. Your soul has cried out and has been heard. Many blessings surround you. May you go in peace. This podcast is brought to you by the Love Serve Remember Foundation and Ramdas.org. We appreciate you listening and we appreciate all the support that you've given us. Please continue that support and donate at ramdas.org. We can then continue to share what Ramdas has been sharing for all of these years. Thank you.